What's going on guys, it's your casual gamer and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a Nintendo 64 emulator called Project 64. So let's head over to pj64mu.com, the link to this page is in the description below. Once you are here, go ahead and click on download here. And your download will start. I have the Project 64 setup file downloaded here on my desktop. Let's go ahead and open it. You can't see my screen because my user account control came up. Do you want to allow this app to make changes? Yes. Welcome to Project 64 setup. Next. Go ahead and choose a location on your computer you want Project 64 to be installed. I'm fine with it being on my C drive, but if you hit browse, you can go ahead and select your SSD, your external SSD, external hard drive, wherever you want to install this emulator. Next. Now it's gonna ask you do you wanna create a desktop icon and do you want this emulator to be downloaded in portable mode, which will make this emulator easy to be moved between drives. I'm not gonna be moving this emulator from my C drive, so I'm just gonna create a desktop icon. The download is done and I'm gonna leave launch project 64 checked and hit finish. Then you're gonna get this pop-up asking do you want to support Project 64? This is up to you. If you want to give them a donation, I'm gonna hit continue. Now the first thing we're gonna do is add our games to the emulator. But first, to make sure your games is in a playable format, which Project 64 runs .z64 files. So here I have GoldenEye 007 as a compressed file that needs to be extracted. Now I use 7-zip to extract my files. If you need to download 7-zip, a link to this program is in the description below. Once you have it downloaded, come back to the file, right click on it, go to show more options, 7-zip, and then extract here. And this is gonna create your extracted file so you no longer need the zip file. Now if I go to properties on our extracted file, you'll see that the type of file is a .64. Back on the emulator, let's go up to file, choose ROM directory, go ahead and locate wherever you have your N64 ROMs. In my case, I have a folder here on my external hard drive. Select that folder and hit okay. And you will see all of your games load into the emulator. Now let's go up to options, graphic settings, and for the full screen resolution, we're gonna change this to whatever your monitor's resolution is. In my case, I have a 1080p monitor, so I'm going 1920 by 1080. For the windowed resolution, we're gonna up this to 1440 times 1080. For the aspect ratio, I prefer to play my games in full screen, so I changed this to 16 to nine, but this is up to you. You can leave it at four to three, which will give you the black bars on the side, but I will let you know that some games may look a little stretch when using 16 to nine. And let's enable V-Sync to make sure we don't get any screen tear. We're gonna stick with no anti-aliasing. We're gonna turn the anisotropic filtering all the way up to 16 times. And what this is gonna do is smooth out your textures in game, making your games look a lot better. And we are done here, so let's come down to save and close. Now let's map out our controller. Let's go up to options, input settings. Now I have tested an Xbox One, Xbox Series, and a PlayStation 5 controller with this emulator, and all three of those controllers work. And the controller I am using now is an Xbox One controller. Now the great thing about using an Xbox One controller is that this emulator will map your controls out for you. Now I know the C buttons and B and A button can be a little confusing to map out on your controller, but the way this emulator will map those buttons out is that your B button will be your left bumper and your A button will be your right bumper. My Y button will be up, A will be down, left will be X, and right will be B. Now if you wanted to change the mapping of any of these buttons, then what you wanna do is click on the box next to the button. So let's say we wanted to change our B button. We would just click on this box and hit whatever button we want to be, that B button. Now if you're using a wire controller or any controller that's not being automatically mapped, the easiest way to set that controller up is to come down here to setup and it would take you through each button, giving you 10 seconds to choose a button on your controller. So right now it wants to know what button you want to use for up, down, 
left, right, your analog stick up, down, left, right, and so on. Once you are done setting your controller up, hit apply and okay. Now let's go ahead and load up a game. All you wanna do is click on the game you wanna play and it will load up. Now, if you wanna go full screen, go up to options and full screen. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.